one by one. Suzanne Sherman, do I have your permission to record? Yes, you do. Hal Lohr, do I have your permission to record? Yes, you do. Okay. On the phone right now is Suzanne Sherman, a radio host in the middle of America, someone on the right, someone who knows a lot of people on the right, and knows a lot of Americans in the middle of America, people who live in red states. The other person on the phone is Hal Lore, and he is a leader in liberal California, super lefty, supporting the cal movement. Now, the reason that we have both these people on the phone today is that they don't know each other. They've never talked. This is the first conversation they've had with each other. You're going to see that right now. And they both said the exact same thing in response to a question. That question was, what could a Californian tell someone in red state America, roughly 40 states in the South Midwest, to get them to support cal -exit? What would a lefty, super lefty Californian walk right up to a hardcore red state person on the right and says X, and suddenly that person in the red state says, I support cal -exit now. What is that thing? I asked Hal that question four months ago, and he said, and he was alone. Nobody else in the cal movement was saying the same thing. This was just Hal. He said it. He was the only one that said it, say it four months ago. Nobody else backed him up. And he said, you tell people in the red states, Californians can't con be controlled. We're super left. We think everybody should. We think we know better than you, and we're coming to a state near you to take over your city, change your laws, and have you turn into Californians. And we think that's a great idea. Nothing's going to stop us. Your best bet, red state conservatives, is to work with CalExit because we are the only left Californians saying, we realize you guys don't like that, and it's a recipe for trouble. So why don't we work together to support CalExit? Now, recently I talked to Suzanne Sherman on the right, radio host, and I said, Suzanne, with your experience talking to Americans in red states, what is the one thing a Californian could say to a conservative to get them to support Calix? And Suzanne said the exact same thing as Hal. So let me ask both of you, have you both met before? Have you been in communication with each other, back channels, and I didn't know about this? Or is it true that two random people from two widely different political spectrums came to the exact same recommendation? Which one is it? Well, we've never we, we've never met before. I've never I I've never spoken with Susan before. So that I would I would think it would be difficult for us to have prepared notes. Suzanne, I, I'd never heard of, I'd never heard of Hal until I got the email from you. Uh, you know, stating that this, this anomaly had occurred, but it just goes to show that common sense is nonpartisan, doesn't it? <laughs> so Suzanne, repeat what you what you said in your words, and then how I'll ask you to repeat what you said in your words, and we'll, we'll go from there. Suzanne, what what was it that you said in your words? Well, what I've realized, because actually I don't know if you know this, but I lived in California until 2013. I've lived there my entire life, so I have seen California change. And I moved to Utah primarily because of the high taxes of California, many of the draconian gun laws, and I just didn't like the direction uh, the state was headed. And I lived through it, I experienced it. So I moved to the state of Utah where there were values that could unequivocally be categorized as far right. And what I am seeing just in the seven years that I've been here. Uh, has been a significant change, uh, dramatic talks with regards to gun control, and we're seeing, uh, you know, more of expansion of Medicaid, and essentially the, um, the ex expanding of government, raising of taxes that I saw in California, and for reasons that are pretty obvious, a lot of Californians that are sick and tired of what's going on in California leave the state but they don't leave their philosophy behind. And so I'm seeing that. Sir. So what I'm kind of thinking is, look, if, if, if we want to have a safe place to go, and eventually, you know, I will say right now, the, the conservatives are up against the rope. All the people on the left have to do, and this is what I tell my listeners, every state in this union has a seat of government. It's capital. That is the city where 
where all the lefties, the pork of the use these uh, labels, that's where they go and they take over the seat of government. And this is going to be the problem. This is why ultimately we are going to lose unless we allow states that want to be away from this union to succeed, to leave, and to trade with us and to respect our uniqueness and our individuality as cultures within this continental landmass. If we can have that, every single point of contention coming from Washington, D.C., that is a social matter that was intended to be uh, handled by the states only, we can get along and we can stop this fighting. How? What is it, in your words, what is it that you said and does, am I right, am I getting this wrong, does it match up with what Suzanne's saying? Your opinion, sir. Oh. Um, no, Suzanne is, is, reaching, is reaching the same conclusion. Uh, as as I did, or as, as the Calexit movement did, has reached, um, I was I was saying this in mathematics. The proof looks a little different than mine, um, but the, but the conclusion is basically the same. Right. What what happens if, what happens from a California standpoint is we're talking we're not talking about left or left, right, or center. It's there's a question of California values, and these these are not recognized necessarily on a national level. So, I mean, Californians, Californians actually feel as under attack from the, basically the rest of the country as as she was as she's saying that the people on the right are feeling from California. This puts us in this puts us basically in a situation where neither side can really can, can really live in the world that's being, that, that the other side wants to create. So, yeah, ca California will, ca Californians will be Californians. When they leave the state, when they ex when we export values, when we talk, when we talk, when we push politically, we are always going to run into this problem. We will, it's like, if Californians have to, if Californians who believe in their values want to live after or have to live in America, then it, it's sort of a natural instinct to want to make America as California as possible. Um, that's not, the, that's not, a, that's not necessarily just a left-wing rally cry. It's, it's the truth. If you if you believe in your values, you're going to try to you're going to try to make sure that your values are not under attack, and both sides are, are feeling the same way. So yes, that's I mean, like I said, our our our, our social map, the proof of our social map on this differs. I believe differs, but the conclusion is the same. The other side wants to the other side necessarily wants to live in the world that is being created by the other. Suzanne. With thoughts, feelings, I think I just heard a super lefty say he completely agrees with someone on the right. Yeah, and I think what we're both feeling is that each side feels like they're being held under attack. And, uh, you know, and, and I see that, again, as, as the values change in Utah politically because of the influx of, of new citizens here in the state from Places like New York and California were getting a lot more government oversight and, and uh, some of the freedoms that were once enjoyed in Utah I see diminishing. And, you know, both sides feel attacked. I feel more attacked from the left, from my perspective, because I see the battle ultimately as lost on our side. And that might give California some, some peace of mind. But, you know, when you have a system of education that is run by the government, if you have the media that is overwhelmingly, you know, what we think about, they have grants from the government, they have licenses, and uh, they're run by the government, essentially, we're going to get the big government talking point. So essentially, we are losing any semblance of limited government that we once had, and even on the right side of it, they are also proposing unlimited government in size and scope. And again, the more powerful this government is going to get be it at a state or national level, you know, top down from D.C., ultimately it's going to hurt both sides because we're going to have one draconian solution that's supposed to somehow apply to all of us. That's not going to make people in California happy. That's not going to make people in, in Kansas happy. So we need, what we do need to do is, is join for the common purpose of our own sovereignty 
history and cultures, and that way, if we can get out from top-down decision-making, everybody can possibly have some place to go, and we won't feel like we have to fight for every scrap in every single state. Wouldn't it be nice that California could be California and not have people from, you know, Ohio uh, saying what horrible people they are, and people in Oklahoma could be Oklahomans, and California doesn't have to bash them either. This whole thing, this hatred across the continental landmass, seems like such a waste of time and energy. I agree. <laughs> I, was, I was expecting more, something more in, uh, yeah, that's, this is so awesome. I have, I have more, but I, I, it would, it, the truth is, I have, I have to say that at that moment. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, that's absolutely true. It's like California's, California's don't want people, are tired of people from Ohio or from Iowa or, or from Kentucky telling Californians how we're, how we're supposed to live. We don't, we don't want to, it's like, they're tired of us telling them how to live, but we're tired of them. But the, you know what the real trick is? And I think, I think we, I think we can also agree on this. Both sides have reached the point of fatigue. They're tired of it. They're tired of this fight. It's why the fight seems so desperate. It's like we're t- and both sides, you know, both sides are tired of the ar- are tired of the fight, tired of the argument. We've had enough. We don't want to be. We don't want to be told how to live. They don't want to be told how to live. So why are we? It's like why are we still have? Why are we still having the arguments? We don't. It's like obviously neither side can give. Neither side can give, and neither side. Can, but the wants to go on with it. Well, we, once, we tried this once before where there was going to be peaceful political divorce. This is a term that we've used before. And I like to have the analogy to a marriage. If you're in a marriage, and it doesn't matter who's to blame, it's just not working out, but you're linked from all these, you know, successful issues, real estate issues, and things, you know, you're so locked in. How do you get away from each other? All right, let's just stop the fighting. Let's go our own ways. Let's work out the details of the house, of the finances, whatever, and continue to exist and have what we need to do or we have to relate to each other, but we no longer have a reason to fight. Well, once upon a time, uh, some states tried to do that and live peacefully among another group of states, the Union. And uh, I compare this to the marriage once again. Uh, uh, one, one partner tries to leave and the other refuses to allow them to leave, murders their family members, kills their dogs, destroys their property, and so the point where the other person says, fine, I give up, well, that's fine. You can stay, but I'm going to keep a gun at your head in case you decide to leave again, and that's really the situation where we are now, and any kind of independence California would like to have is uh, going to be reined in if they are in disagreement with the federal overlords because of these Powell grants. So the money that California is sending to D.C., if they could keep, they could manage their own affairs. I think that would be fantastic. Um, again, agreed. How long is it? I mean, the question is, the question is, honestly, no, I, I, have no, I have no disagreement with those statements. Um, it, is a, it is a question of how long are we going to continue yelling at each other until we until we realize that we're just not going to see eye to eye, and that's 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 where we're that's where that's where my statement four months ago came. In. If if we have to stay, we're going to try to we're, the Californians will try to make it as livable as possible. They'll try to, you know, we will continue to fight. They, you know, and those who do not, who, who do not support California values, they're not, go, they're never going to go away. Whoever wins or loses, it's never going away. The loser is, the, the loser in this, this fight culturally isn't going to go, well, we lost. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do about it. No, it's going to be a constant, it's going to be a constant back and forth. And it will swing one side or the other, and there will never, and it will never end. It hasn't ended for the last 40 years, left, right, in the left, right swing. Why are we going to continue doing this? 
Why keep going? I mean, we should, we need, she and I agree. She and I agree. But we're still miles apart. You know, and the, the common denominator is that we, we would desire a system that represents our values. And this isn't a left-right issue. It's a basic human decency issue because the more we fight, the more the system that is denying us our ability to live according to our desires and our freedom is the one that continues to get bigger. The more we fight every disaster that we have, we have more draconian infringements on our liberty. And Washington, D.C. is letting us, you know, hash this out, and it doesn't matter to them. So we can fight what we want and not get along. And you see this on the streets where people they are being assaulted because they have a red hat on, uh, or, you know, I see bumper stickers that are very inflammatory on both sides towards each other. But you know what? When people aren't hiding behind their cars or behind a wind, uh, you know, a computer screen and their keyboards, like we got together in, in Dallas, Marcus, we had a fantastic time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the argument, is, the argument in, within California is, is strange because uh, we talk about conservatives in California. But conservatives in California differ. Even conservatives in California differ from the rest of the country in many places. It's like most of the conservatives we talk to here, whether, they, whether it's just they've given up the fight or what have you, they really don't care about who married who anymore or about the, I mean, the abortion issue is almost, is, is almost never an issue here in California. There's a, there's so, there's the social divide, the social divide is greater and greater, even amongst conservatives in California versus the rest of the country. So the argument, the argument, I mean, to, to, to put it in left and right, to put it in left and right is sort of an easy white hat to black hat kind of, kind of way to do it. But really, really over, from an overriding standpoint, it's cultural. And one of, one of the places where Susan and I agree, it's like Washington, 20, you know, 2,500 miles away, doesn't care what happens here in California. They don't care what happens. As long as the checks don't bounce, they don't care what happens. So, I mean, we keep running into the same thing. Impasse, impasse after impasse after impasse. And when's that going to end? How does that end? Both sides can't, you know, both sides can't be right. Both sides can't, both sides can't stay in the same house and win. And neither side will give, and neither side will give up the fight if they don't. Well said. Um, Suzanne, uh, last minute, last comments, thoughts, feelings? About the whole conversation? I guess my, yeah, my whole conversation, I, I think I can sum up my feelings this way, is we can scratch and claw at each other and try and climb this mountain, and one of us wants to get on the top of it. And the problem is there is an uh, overwhelmingly <laughs> illegitimate government in Washington, D.C. that is responsible for all this contention, again, by one power grab after another, before the ink was dry and the holy parchment, I like to say. And this is just the culmination of, of a century and a half or two of, of just this nightmare. And so I, I think what we really need to do is stop looking towards each other for our differences in values and culture and look at the reason why we are all fighting. And it's not us, it's the clowns over in that 10 square miles of swamp. And it's never going to be drained unless the people of the state decide to take the power away from them. And then it takes away the temptation for us all to fight against each other. Yes. So, well, what, one, thing that I, one thing that we at Cal Asia Movement like to talk about, or we, and we use as a talking point, those founding fathers, those, those gents in the wigs, when they, were writing, when they were writing the Constitution, they didn't even know what California looked like. They didn't, they, they, they weren't, they were vaguely aware that we even existed, 
didn't write the co that Constitution for a nation this size. They didn't write the Constitution for us. So, you know, it's not surprising that, it, that, that as the country expanded, it's not really working out very well.